So it looks like there's a donation initiative of sorts where you can donate meals to the next person by presumably paying the guy who sells the mixed rice. So it's pretty heartwarming to see that all of the donation slots are already filled. So nice to know that if anybody is going hungry around here, they can just go there and claim some food. You know, we don't feel it as much, maybe because it's very distributed all across the world, but almost 250,000 people have lost their lives to the COVID pandemic, and that's just very sobering, you know. So I've been thinking about the vlog a bit and this may be a bit of a surprise but the thing that bothers me a bit about it is that these past few weeks has been pretty long. It almost kind of feels like I've just been, you know, filming almost for the sake of filming and just capturing pretty much anything and everything that I can, you know, get my hands on. And also at the end of the week, you know, it's, it's a little bit stressful when I look over the footage and find out that there's a lot more of it than I expected. And more often than not, I'm also somewhat disappointed in those footages, so... How shall I put it? It feels like these blocks lack a soul, you know what I mean? Now I don't really know where I'm going with this, and... I don't know. I suppose the obvious thing to do would be to try to slow down a little bit and you know, as the cliched saying goes, emphasize quality over quantity or something to that effect. But that is also easier said than done because sure, you know, I could slow down. But having slowed down, you know, what do I focus on? What do I slow down in order to bring out better? And I don't have a good answer to that right now, you know. I suppose the question that it kind of comes down to is what do I want to do with these vlogs, right? What is the thing that I want it to show, you know? What is the story that I want to tell with these random footages that I take all the time? And I suppose that comes back to the idea of soul. What is the soul of this vlog? I don't have an answer, I'm just kind of musing as I walk.
So I met a guy who was taking a time lapse at the top of the building and he was giving me pointers on where I can go to get footage of sunrise which is a tempting proposition except that I would have to adjust my sleep schedule if you know what I mean. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Beautiful sunset today. <sighs> About the soul of the vlog thing that I was talking about a bit back in Tuesday, I've been kind of pondering it over the week and before I talk about my conclusions there, I'm gonna take this opportunity to do a little bit of a ramble as I usually want to do. So here we go. C.S. Lewis in one of my favorite books of his, and this is a book that I've read quite a long time ago. and. This passage has kind of stayed with me for quite a long time, even till the present day. So it is from the book called Surprise by Joy. And here he's talking about his experience reading this book called Fantasties by George MacDonald. So I'm just going to go ahead and read this passage. I'm going to leave out some sentences so that it's not too long. Here goes. For the first time, the song of the sirens sounded like the voice of my mother or my nurse. It was as though the voice which had called to me from the world's end were now speaking at my side. It was with me in the room, or in my own body, or behind me. If it had once eluded me by its distance, it now eluded me by proximity. Something too near to see, too plain to be understood, on this side of knowledge. When the great moments came, I did not break away from the woods and cottages that I read of to seek some bodiless light shining beyond them, but gradually, with a swelling continuity, I found the light shining on those woods and cottages, and then on my own past life, and on the quiet room where I sat, and on my old teacher, where he nodded above his little tactics. Up till now, each visitation of joy had left the common world momentarily a desert. Even when real clouds or trees had been the material of the vision, there had been so only by reminding me of another world, and I did not like the return to ours. But now, I saw the bright shadow coming out of the book into the real world and resting there, transforming all common things and yet itself unchanged. Or, more accurately, I saw the common things drawn into the bright shadow. Now what C.S. Lewis is talking about here, this sort of transition from an imaginative longing for something otherworldly, something wonderful and fantastic and out there, to a more homely, to an appreciation of you know, the shine of beauty upon normal, ordinary things. It's something that has happened to an extent in my life, and you could even say it's something that is still in the process of happening. As a teenager, I was really into dragons and magic and that sort of high fantasy stuff. And I still kind of am, but I was really into it back then. Ever since then, somehow, the things that I enjoy, kind of the stories and the visual media and the life experiences that I've had have somehow kind of brought the frontier back and to an extent taught me to appreciate things that are in the here and now, things that are in your surroundings, common, ordinary things in the everyday. And I think that has by and large been a very healthy thing. C.S. Lewis calls it the baptism of the imagination and I can certainly see where he's coming from there. It is one of my deep beliefs that beauty can be found in crevices all around us, even in the ordinary. Now perhaps the most pronounced experience I have of this kind of appreciating of ordinary and common things is during the few months that I spent in Japan. 
Because in Japan, things that, that are common, that are ordinary, you know, from the skyscrapers to the, you know, the alleyways, from the suburban landscape to the rivers, the countryside, the hills, everything is so unusual and so uh, almost otherworldly. And at the same time, it is still ordinary, it is still common, it is still simple. And so you get a very direct path to an appreciation of the common things when you're there in Japan. I just watched um, a movie called Whisper of the Heart by Studio Ghibli last week and without saying anything about anything else in the movie, just the atmospheric elements of it is, it really just highlights what I'm talking about. The mundane beauty of Japanese landscapes. Just the stage on which the simple story of the film unfolds. It's so comforting, it's so homely, and yet it glows with a beautiful light. It really reflects the time that I spent in Japan, where I could actually just wake up in the morning and be filled with a sense of wonder and thanksgiving and praise just from seeing what is. So fast forward to Singapore, which is of course where I'm currently stuck spending my time during the lockdown. Perhaps this is a bit of a confession coming in, but I've always been a little bit scoffing about the ordinary aesthetics, you could say, of Singapore. Perhaps, you know, it has to do with how I really hate the weather here, but I've always found, you know, the kind of common scenery that you can find living in Singapore. It's flats, void decks, and you know, just the way the gardens and the sidewalks are designed. I've always found them unappealing. This is where vlogging comes back into this ramble. The very act of vlogging, just having a camera in hand, you know, what it does to you is it makes you constantly look around, makes you look at details in your surroundings because you're constantly looking for things to put into your camera, things that may have a little bit of a spark of beauty that may look interesting in a particular angle. It feels to me like having a camera and doing this vlog for the past few weeks has opened my eyes to an extent. It has come some way in helping me cure my dismissiveness and to help me begin to better appreciate and enjoy the beauty of the ordinary here in Singapore as well. So, coming back to the vlog again, I feel like this is something that I want to be able to bring out in my vlogs as well. To be able to push the idea of the beauty of the common, of the mundane. Now, of course, unfortunately, I'm not too sure how to go about bringing this to reality. But I've also been looking at these past few weeks of vlogs that I've been producing. And I think there are two things that I can do to move the needle in the direction that I want the vlog to go. The first thing is that the vlogs are too long. They need to be shorter. Because I feel like when it comes to things like this, it cannot drag on. Because even if you have really good shots, I feel, if the vlog drags on for too long and covers too much ground, then you lose the spark. So I think one of the first things I should do is to shorten the vlog, to be more selective in my filming, to be more selective during editing. And the second thing I think is that the vlog needs to be about less things. Because if it's about too many things, then again, it kind of rambles on and you don't kind of latch onto it. And you know, that's how the vlog loses its soul. So I think that the vlog can be about you know, one or two things, or it could even be about nothing. Sometimes being about nothing, it can be a very comfortable thing as well. We call it slice of life in anime. But once it gets to be about too many things, then kind of the mental baggage that it produces is just not worth the time. Anyway, that is gonna do it for this week. I will probably keep on thinking about this over the next week as well. We will see what comes out of that. So, I will see you again next week. Till then.